ஹாய் காய்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு நம்ம கேபிஎஸ்சி அகாடமி கர்நாடகா எக்கனாமிக் சர்வே வீடியோ சீரீஸ் வி ஆர் டிஸ்காசிங் அபவுட் நேச்சுரல் ரிசோர்ஸஸ் அண்ட் என்வாயர்மெண்ட் அண்ட் இன் டுடேஸ் வீடியோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் லெட் அஸ் ஸ்டடி அபவுட் மைனிங் செக்டர் ஆஃப் கர்நாடகா Karnataka state is rich in mineral resources which cover an area of about 1.92 lakh square kilometer the state is rich in valuable mineral deposits at various places of karnataka in the state the department of mines and geology is responsible for the effective and efficient administration of these mineral resources which are raw materials for various industries locating mineral deposits which are not readily open on the surface is the thirst area of exploration to achieve this the department has granted more number of reconnaissance permits and prospecting licenses to national and international exploration companies for taking up exploration activities now let us study about the policy initiatives launched by government of karnataka with respect to mines and minerals first of all karnataka state mineral policy 2008 this policy was framed in accordance with the mines and minerals act 1957 of government of india this mines and minerals act 1957 provides powers to government of india to frame rules and regulations with respect to mines and minerals likewise government of india has framed the following rules the regulations launched by government of india in accordance with mines and minerals act 1957 include minerals concession rules the evidence of mineral content rules the mineral auction rule the mineral mining by government company rules and the mineral conservation and development rules so government of karnataka is working in tandem with these rules through karnataka state mineral policy 2008 now let us study about karnataka state sand policy 2011 the state government has formulated karnataka minor mineral concession rules 1994 and as per the order of supreme court of india and model guidelines of government of india amendments were made consequently to this act it is through this act karnataka state sand policy was formulated in 2011 and consequently on august 12 2016 a new amendment was brought to this policy and new notifications were issued accordingly deputy commissioners and tahsildars were given more powers to check unauthorized extractions and sale of sand as per the new rules also this new rules made provisions which made to grant sand querying leases for the period of 5 years through public tender cum auctions also according to the new amendments to maintain the ecological balance and adverse effect on groundwater government has taken the measures to initiate m sand production and utilization as an alternative to river sand presently m sand is being produced in 18 districts of the karnataka state now let us study about other initiatives taken up by government of karnataka with respect to mining and minerals government of karnataka is continuously working to achieve comprehensive computerization of mineral administration in this background the department has adopted a new system of e permitting online through integrated lease management system in which n code has offered integrated software development and portal application modules such as e permit e return demand collection and assessment wave bridge integration and other related modules covered in single portal for stakeholders and mining in karnataka also the department has notified the amended rules under section 23c of mines and minerals act 1957 called the karnataka prevention of illegal mining transportation and storage of mineral rules 2010 to curb illegal mining and transportation end user registration proportionate validity of trip sheets establishment of check posts is some of the salient features of the rule presently two squad teams at state level and six squad teams at district levels have been formed 
in order to control illegal mining and transportation throughout the state. Also, Government of Karnataka is working towards reclamation and rehabilitation. As per the Honorable Supreme Court orders of 2011, the state is committed to develop and implement suitable reclamation and rehabilitation plans for the mining affected districts of Bellari, Chitradurga, Tumkur. Also, the department is taking up various other initiatives like setting up of check posts, procurement of advanced instruments to detect illegal mining in Karnataka. The department has also launched Action Plan 2017-18. The Department of Mines and Geology, being an important scientific and technical organization, has several prime functions in the field of mineral administration and mineral investigations. The objective of the department in the field of mineral administration is to regulate and control the mining and querying activities. In this background, the department has launched the Action Plan 2017-18, keeping in view the need for mineral conservation and scientific mining and quarrying. Now, let us continue the discussion with climate change and mitigation measures. Basics of this topic and other related topics like pollution will be covered in your environment section of general studies. In Karnataka, Environmental Management and Policy Research Institute is the nodal agency dealing with the issues of climate change and formulation of mitigation measures. This institute undertakes scientific research, policy research and offers training on concurrent environmental issues relevant to society, industry and government. This institute is taking up various initiatives. Under the National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change, which is an initiative of Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, a Strategic Knowledge Center on Climate Change was established by EMPRI during 2016. In addition, a web portal named Karnataka State Climate Change Strategic Knowledge Portal has been developed to disseminate knowledge on climate change and related activities in an interactive and efficient way throughout the state of Karnataka. In addition, EMPRI is taking up other initiatives like establishment of telemetric weather stations and promoting research projects. Also, EMPRI is taking up documentation of case studies through which activities, programs and best practices for adaptation and mitigation of climate change is documented. Some of the case studies which are documented recently include organic farming for climate change adaptation, organic farming as an adaptation strategy to climate change through Savayava Bhagya Yojani in Karnataka, integrated approach of Suchala watershed scheme towards mitigation of climate change in state of Karnataka, climate change adaptation and mitigation strategy in Karnataka agriculture through millet promotion and organic farming and lastly Krishi Aranya Protsaha Yojane as an adaptation and mitigation measure for climate change. In addition, EMPRI is also coordinating with government departments for developing projects under national and international funding. It has taken up initiatives for the monitoring of NAFCC project undertaken by Department of Animal Husbandry and Veterinary Services. Also, it is involved in preparation of proposals and reports. Likewise, it prepared green budget for Karnataka. Through this budget, the intended nationally determined contributions were reviewed in the context of National Action Plan on Climate Change and Karnataka State Action Plan on Climate Change. The various green schemes, policies, programs relating to INDCs were also shortlisted in this budget. Also, EMPRI is working as Center for Capacity Building. Capacity building includes activities which strengthen the knowledge, abilities, skills and behavior of individuals and improve institutional structures and processes such that organization can efficiently meet its mission and goals in a sustainable way. 
EMPRI has also set up Center for Lake Conservation with a view of developing conservation strategies for the water bodies in Hubali Darwad Municipal Corporation and other places. Now let us study about outreach activities taken by EMPRI in Karnataka. First of all, we must study about Environmental Information System. So ENVIS is a project of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change to disseminate various necessary information required to formulate mitigation strategies to tackle climate change. In this background, Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change has notified EMPRI as the nodal agency for ENVIS in Karnataka and has the responsibility of running the ENVIS Centre dated from 1st January 2009. Likewise, EMPRI is taking up various initiatives to provide necessary information to tackle climate change. The next program is National Green Corps program. The National Green Corps is a major initiative of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change launched in 2001. The objective of the program is to establish National Green Army in schools all over the state to create awareness on environment and carry out action-based programs for protection and improvement of the environment. Also, eco clubs are set up under this program each year to undertake various activities at all levels. Also through NGC program, World Environment Day and World Ozone Day are celebrated. Now we must study about Coastal Regulation Zone Management. The basic features of Karnataka's coast and other details are covered in Namak APSC Karnataka Geography video series. The coastal stretches up to 500 meters from the high tide line towards the landward side all along the coast, area up to by 12 nautical miles up to a point till the tidal influence is felt and the land on either side of this tidally influenced water bodies up to a maximum of 100 meters is declared as coastal regulation zone as per the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change Notification 2011. The coastal stretches so declared as coastal regulation zone have been classified into four zones which include CRZ 1, 2, 3 and 4. It is based on ecological sensitivity and land use pattern. In this background, Karnataka State Coastal Zone Management Authority has been constituted for effective management of coastal regulation zones. It is to be noted that the preparation of coastal zone management plans for Karnataka as per the CRZ notification 2011 has been entrusted to the National Centre for Sustainable Coastal Management, Chennai. Now let us study about Karnataka State Environment Impact Assessment Authority. Pursuant to Environment Impact Assessment Notification 2006 of Government of India, State Level Environment Impact Assessment Authority and State Expert Appraisal Committee were constituted in 2007 for a period of three years. The authority and committees were then reconstituted on the recommendations of the state government. This authority has received maximum applications in the year 2017. Detailed scrutiny of the proposals with respect to the use of natural resources and the possible impact on the environment is being done through this authority. The methodology include screening, scoping, public consultation and appraisal. So guys, we are concluding with our discussion. Before concluding, here is a reminder. In the description box, you shall find the links to download the ebooks of Nama KPSC Academy. So guys, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe Nama KPSC YouTube channel. For more queries, contact us. Thank you again.